how do we ensure that, that our love for Bhagwan and his teachings does not turn into an unhealthy attachment which may impede us on the path? For instance, where we ignore other forms of truth or we believe our method and guru to be superior to others. I have observed aspects of Vedanta to be quite tribal and something I don't want to get caught up in. If we are following Bhagavan's path, Bhagavan's path is about going within. There, there can be no tribal going within. Yes, of course, there are different... Vedanta is based upon the Upanishads. The Upanishads are like a mother, but give different food to children of different ages. That is, the, the food that is appropriate for the adult child will not be appropriate for the infant. So the mother gives the appropriate food for the child. So the Upanishads give room to be in, for them to be interpreted in so many different ways. That's why there are so many different interpretations of Vedanta. There's Advaita, Vishista Advaita, Veda Veda, um, Chintya Veda Veda, uh, Dvaita, Suddha Dvaita, um, Dvaita Dvaita. So many different interpretations of Vedanta are there. According to the maturity of the mind, that say, as Bhagavan said, according to the maturity, the purity of the mind, the same teachings will reflect in different ways. So, why are there so many different interpretations of Vedanta? It's appropriate that there are so many different interpretations because different interpretations suit people at different levels of spiritual development. So we are we are not here to quarrel with others. Bhagavan makes that very clear in verses two and three of um Uludu Napadu, in which he says, um, I mean, he, he's referring to the, just, just this sort of, um, this type of um, tribal um, um, uh, disputes between different interpretation. He, he, in verse two, he says, each re religion in, initially accepts three fundamentals, that is world, soul, and God. Contending only one fundamental stands as the three fundamentals. Three fundamentals are always actually three fundamentals. That's two different points of view he's talking about there. It's only so long as ego exists. I perishing, standing in the state of oneself is best. So that is all disputes, all philosophical disputes are there only for ego. That is not what Uludunapu is about. That is what Bhagavan teaches us in Uludunapu is the highest Advaita. But we are not to go and tell this to others who are who are not yet ready for this. Um, we need to be. I mean, we all make mistakes sometimes. As probably many of you are aware, I made a mistake in talking with someone um, uh, last month. Someone who wasn't yet ready for this. That's fine. I mean, we 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 shouldn't try to push for the highest teachings on those who are not yet ready for them. So um, I took part in a discussion because I was invited to. It was probably an error on my, of judgment on my part to, to, to try to point out the deeper teachings of Bhagavan because the person I was speaking to obviously wasn't ready to accept that. So it would, it, it, there's no point in trying to uh, quarrel with others. I mean, Bhagavan's teachings are not for debating. I, 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 I'm not good at debating because it, debating doesn't interest me. If, if people want to accept Bhagavan's teachings and ask me about them, I can explain. But if people don't want to expect, accept Bhagavan's teachings, I'm not one to try and persuade them. So I'm not good at debating. So anyway, but why I say that is, that is not what Bhagavan's teachings are about. So if others have other views, let them have whatever view they want. We shouldn't try and disturb. But in Gita, Krishna says, one should not uh, disturb the faith of those who have attachment to karmas. So everyone is at their own level. We should allow them to be at their own level. That's so. That's what he says in verse two. All these disputes are only so long as ego exists. I perishing. That is ego perishing. Being in the state of in our real state, that is best. And then in the next verse, verse three, he says, um, 
what is the use of disputing the world is real, an unreal appearance, the world is sentient, it is not, the world is happiness, it is not. Leaving the world and investigating oneself, one and two ceasing, one and two ceasing implies going beyond duality and non-duality, uh, that uh, that state in which I has perished is agreeable to all. <coughs> So what Bhagavan implies in both of these verses is that we are not here to quarrel with others. Others will have different views. Let them have the, their, whatever they believe is appropriate for them at their stage of spiritual development. That's fine. That need not concern us. Bhagavan's path is an inward path. Bhagavan's path is all about investigating and thereby eradicating this ego. That is what it's all about. So just to make that clear, Bhagavan put these two verses right at the beginning to, to make us understand we are not here to dispute with others. Let others believe whatever they want to believe. Uh, because whatever they want to believe is what's appropriate for them at this stage of their, in their... I mean, we're all on a spiritual journey. At different stages on the spiritual journey, different beliefs are appropriate. So once we've come to Bhagavan's path, this is an inward path. We are about looking within. So we are not about being tribal. We are about, this is a, this is a solitary path. We can't, um, some people do group meditations or guided meditations. This is completely contrary to Bhagavan, I mean, completely um, alien to Bhagavan's teachings because Bhagavan's teachings are about going back within. Nobody can guide you to go within. So we don't need any guided meditation, and we can't go within as a group. We can go each. We it's up to each one of us to turn our attention within and to subside back in our own heart. So there is, of course, there's tribalism in in Vedanta, as in it's human nature, and so and different people have different views. Let them all have. Let not be concerned about others' views. Let us try to understand what Bhagavan has taught us and follow the path he has taught us which is an inward going path. If we're following his path, there's no danger of getting caught up in disputes. If we get caught up in disputes, it's because we've allowed our mind to go outwards. That is the mistake that Bhagavan is trying to uh, safeguard us against. <laughs>